It's a dual world. On one hand, you have the government, they have problems. You may have noticed that. The budget deficit in the OECD region is something like $2,700 billion. It is quite huge. The total debt in the OECD region is something like $36 trillion. Actually, it's so big, it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's just a number. And we are playing with numbers and we forget it is money behind. So this is a problem. On the other hand, you have a situation which is interesting. The companies are really having a lot of cash. This is the amount of cash on the balance sheet in the United States of America, more than $2 trillion, in Europe also. Companies are really doing much better than governments. And a company like Apple has $145 billion of cash available. This is $12 billion more than the U.S. Treasury. Not bad. But when the U.S. Treasury needs money, they can print it. That's the difference. <laughs> <coughs> Which sometimes we would like to do in companies. Okay, so basically, an incredible level of innovation. Actually, if you are looking, these are the events. These are the companies which have changed our life during the past 15 years. Imagine how difficult it's going to be for all of us to foresee what's going to happen during the next 15 years. Uh, companies like Google, like YouTube events, and uh, Facebook, and all this changed our life. Actually, there is something interesting in these charts. Most of these events, most of these innovations, took place in California, and California is bankrupt. Now, this is interesting. It shows you the difference with the two. Now, I said most of them because one of those did not take place in California, the euro. <laughs> now, of course, it, if it would have taken place in California, maybe it would work better, but that's another story. <laughs> so the world of today is split between uh, the government and the enterprise, and we have to know what's going to happen. Now you are reading the press, we definitely have a slowdown. I mean, it's affecting the economy, it's also affecting us. You know, what's going to be our strategy? My new diversified retirement plan is 30% hope, 30% wishes, and 40% prayers. <laughs> you can try it, it works, you know, pretty well. Uh, where are we? We start to get the, the latest number. This is GDP growth, Q1, 12 months period of time. Very bad news for most of Europe. Some countries are doing a little bit better, like you can see for Germany and Sweden, but the rest is not very good. If you are looking at Latin America, the situation is also disappointing, especially with Brazil, which is slowing down. Not so good numbers elsewhere. Mexico is picking up a little bit. Very good numbers in Venezuela. You can relax, they are wrong. Um, <laughs> there's a bit of cooking, but don't worry too much. Uh, Turkey, India, and Russia uh, could do a lot better. Uh, South Africa, 2.5%. And if you are looking at Asia, definitely there is a bit of up in Japan. Japan is picking up a little bit. China is slowing down. We have not very good numbers in Korea, etc., Taiwan. But China, 7.7%, 7, 7 frankly speaking. Any one of us in this audience, we will take tomorrow 7.7%. So actually, yes, it's slowing down. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. It's not dramatic, but this is probably going to be, with one hope, the United States of America, Q1, which is at 1.8%, actually, this is probably the only good news we have on the international scene at that stage. So, pretty tough situation. Now, if you go quarter of a quarter, which gives you a sense of direction of the economy, uh, China slowing down a little bit, Europe is practically on a recession or is stable, and then the United States of America is picking up. So, I think we are ahead of a rather difficult year, but, you know, we will try to make through it. The first thing is that the debt burden won't disappear. I mean, whatever we are talking about, I mean, this debt mountain, which is the one we are confronted with, is going to be there for some time. Just as a reminder, these are the country between 10 and 60% of debt, the emerging economy, plus the smaller nations in Europe. It's surprising, Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, all these are relatively doing well. The largest economies in Europe are so-so. I mean, they are between 60% and 100% of debt including the U.S., and this is how you know the countries with a lot of problem under above 100%. Now, I have to say that it will be with us for some time because it's slow moving. Why is it slow moving? Take the United States of America. Even if all the measures of economy are implemented, 
in five years from now, the budget deficit is still 3% of the GDP. Even with all the measures of economy in five years from now, the debt is still 104%. It's so big, it's slow moving. And I think it will be with us for some time. Same story in Europe. In Europe, we have now 11 countries where the government is spending more than 50% of the GDP. This is enormous. And of course, when you are in this type of situation, it's very difficult to go backward. The third reason probably is that the central banks are playing a good role elsewhere, but in Europe, for the euro, there is a problem. Now, if you take the Federal Reserve, it has been buying $1,600 billion in government bonds, fine. The Bank of Japan is buying more and more and sustaining the economy, but the European Central Bank, by legislation, cannot buy bonds of government, and therefore is only at $250 billion, cannot play its role as a central bank. So one of the problems of the Eurozone is a problem of governance, is a problem of capacity of decision. And actually, this is well explained there, Europe should speak with one voice. And hopefully, not this one. 